Okay, so for the first part of our course on regression, we're going to start with something that's called simple regression. And as the name implies, it's just a very simple form of regression where we assume that we just have one input and we're just trying to fit a line. Okay, but before we get to starting um, to talk about this simple regression model, let's just recall our task of interest where our case study is um, discussing how to predict house prices. So in particular, we have some house that we want to list for sale, but we don't know the value of this house. And as we discussed at fairly great length in the um, first course of the specialization, um, what we're going to do in this case is we're going to look at other houses um, that sold in the recent past and look at how much they sold and different characteristics of those houses and use that data to inform our um, listing price for our house that we'd like to sell. So let's go through some of the regression fundamentals. What's our data? What's the model that we're going to use? And what's our task of interest? Okay, so the first thing is we're going to take all of our data. Um, so all these houses that we looked at that sold recently. And for each one of them, we're going to record some information. Um, and in this case, in the case of simple regression, where we're assuming that there's just one variable that we're using to predict our house price, um, specifically square feet. For every house, we're going to record how many square feet the house had and what the price was that that house sold for. And so we record this for each of our houses that um, have sold in the past. And this variable x represents the input to our model. OK, this is what we're going to use for our prediction. And what's the output? What are we trying to predict? Well, we're trying to predict the price of the house. Um, so that y variable is going to be the output. So what's the difference between the input and the output? Well, the output y is our quantity of interest. This is our goal. We're trying to predict the um, value of our house so we can list it for sale. Um, and we're going to assume that we can predict y based on x. So we can predict the value of the house based on the square footage of the house. OK, so I'm going to take my data and I'm going to plot it um, x versus y, where x is the square footage of each house and y is the sales price. So that's what this cloud of points represents. And we made exactly this plot in the first course of the specialization. Um, so just to be clear, this circle here represents, let's say, the ith house in my data set. And that house had. Uh, some number of square feet xi and some sales price yi. OK, so this is my data. And what my model represents is the expected relationship between x and y. Remember, that's what we're trying to figure out. Because if we have that relationship, we can use it for predicting the value of my house that I'd like to list for sale. OK, so we're going to assume some relationship which is some functional relationship. So I'm going to call this some function f of x. Um, and like I said, that what that function represents is the expected relationship between x and y. So let's walk through this in a little bit more detail. Um, so let's look at this house, or just for to make this a little bit cleaner, let's look at another house here. Um, now I've reused the letter that I like to use. So I'm going to call this house, sorry, I'm going to re-annotate this. I'm going to call this house J. This is XJ and YJ. And the reason I'm doing this is because I is a special notation for the house that I'm interested in. And so now this house here that I'm looking at, I'm going to say that it sold for some value yi. And based on my model, what my model is saying is that I'm assuming that yi is approximately equal to f of xi, this functional relationship between the square footage of house i and its sales price yi. Um, but I'm assuming that my model is not 100% accurate. You can easily imagine that there are errors um, in this model because you, know, you can have two houses that have exactly the same number of square feet but sell for very different prices. Um, they could have sold at different times. They could have had different numbers of 
bedrooms or bathrooms or size of the yard or locate specific location, neighborhoods, um, school districts, lots of things that we might not have taken into account in our model. Um, so our model is just what we're using as our belief about the relationship um, for prediction, but it's not 100% accurate. There's some error. So the error, so just to be clear, this point here, this, this x is exactly f of xi. It's the function evaluated at some xi value. Um, and we're saying that our observations, which don't fall exactly on this curve defined by f, there's some error. So we'll call this error specific to house i. We're going to call it epsilon i. So what our regression model is saying is that we're assuming that our, our observation yi is equal to f of xi, our expected relationship between x and y, plus some error. And in particular, we're treating this error as a random quantity and we're going to assume that the expected value of this error, so this notation is the expected value. So we're assuming the expected value of this error is equal to zero. And what is expected value? Well, it's just a weighted average of um, over all possible values that error can take weighted by how likely um, the error is to take each of those values. Um, but what this is saying, saying that our expected error is going to be zero, means that it's equally likely that we're going to have positive or negative error for any given house sale. Um, so it's equally likely that our error is positive or negative. And what does this imply? This implies that it's equally likely that our observation, the specific observation um, that we get, is above or below this functional relationship defined, defined by f. So yi is equally likely to be above or below f of xi. OK, so I want to be clear that this is the model that we're using. This is how we're assuming the world works. Um, and there's this very famous quote by George Box that says, essentially all models are wrong, but some are useful. Um, so what we what this means is no model is going to be exactly how the world works. It's not going to exactly predict how houses sell just based on square feet or even if you incorporated other things as well. Um, there are always different idiosyncrasies in, in how the world works. Um, but it's going to models are going to represent some useful abstraction of the relationship between for example, square foot and price that is useful for a task such as prediction. OK, so I want to make it very clear that everything I wrote on the last line is just our belief about how the world is going to work. Or maybe it's not even our belief. Maybe it's just something that we're going to use um, because it's useful, as George Box said. Or it can be useful. And we're going to talk a lot about how we assess how useful things are in this course. But we're going to hold off on that conversation for now. OK, so the first regression task that we have is we have to figure out what model are we going to use. Are we going to assume that there's just a constant relationship between square footage and price? That means regardless of the size of the house, we're expecting every house to sell for the, the same amount. Well, that's probably not a great model. Um, are we going to assume that there's some linear relationship? So as I increase square footage, my price increases at the same rate as I'm increasing square footage. Or am I going to assume that there's some quadratic fit or some higher order polynomial fit or the list of models I can consider 
is very long. And that's what this course is um, partially going to be about is exploring different options that we have for um, models of our, our data. Okay, so one task is out of the space of all these models that we might consider, which is the one that we should use for a given data set and task that we have. Okay, um, but now let's assume that we have selected the model we're gonna use. In this case, um, here we're assuming that um, we're gonna use just a quadratic fit. So assume model f of x is a quadratic function. Then our next task is going to be to estimate a specific quadratic fit to the data. Okay, so a model just specifies the form of something. It's going to be defined in terms of some set of parameters. And then we're going to have to estimate what the specific fit is from the data. So for example, here, this is, this is our estimated quadratic fit, and we'll call it f hat of x. This is um, our estimated function that's fit from our specific data set. Um, or this is another function that we could have fit. And we'll talk about the way in which we're going to fit um, functions to data in this course. OK. But the point is that first we have to choose a model, then we have to um, provide some procedure, some algorithm for fitting that model to the data and coming up with a specific curve that we're going to use for our task, such as prediction. OK, so in the first course of the specialization, we introduced this block diagram or flowchart for um, regression, as well as a bunch of other machine learning tasks. But I just want to walk through this again. Um, so we're going to assume that we have some training data. OK, so all of a sudden I've said the word training data, and I hadn't said that to this point. That's a topic we discussed at a very high level in the first course of the specialization. And we're going to discuss the concept of training data, test data, validation sets, lots of other ideas about assessing, fitting our models and assessing our fits. Um, and choosing between models and all these different topics. We're going to discuss that in this course. But for right now, if you don't know what it means to have training data, go back to the first course of the specialization, watch that video, or look it up online. Uh, for now, I'm going to assume that you know that we have some training data and we're using our training data to fit our um, a specific model. Okay, And for the rest of this module, that's going to suffice. We're only looking at training data. And all the other discussion about validation sets, test sets, and everything like this, choosing between models, assessing the fit of the models, that's going to come later in this course. OK, so when I talk about data in the rest of this module, I'm assuming we're talking about just our training data set, that we've already done some split, and we have our training data. OK, I think I've said enough on that. Um, so we have our training data. And in this case, that's going to be some table of um, house ID, uh, house square feet, and then the house sales price. And we have this big table of all of these quantities. And then what we're going to do um, is extract some features. So maybe actually at this point, instead of specifically saying house square feet, I can just say that there's some set of house attributes. We might have things in addition to two square feet. Um, and so one step we're going to have to do is figure out what input we're going to use for our regression model. Um, we're going to talk about more general features later in the course. But for now, we're just assuming a simple setup where we're going to choose one of our house attributes, call that the input to this regression model, and work from there. So we've talked about using square feet as our selected input. And then we're going to use our machine learning model, which is regression, to predict our house sales prices. So y hat represents our predicted house sales prices. 
price. And how are we predicting it? Well, based on some estimated line um, or curve, so this is our f hat is our estimated function that's fit from our data set, or specifically our training data set. And how are we going to determine f hat? Um, our how are we going to estimate this function? Well, first we're going to need to describe some quality metric that says um, I should describe what y is. I already mentioned this earlier, but let's write it down explicitly. This is the sales price, the actual sales price of um, our houses. And we're going to compare the actual sales price to our predicted sales price using any given f hat. We're going to say, how well did we do? Um, and that's what the quality metric is. So there's going to be some error in our predicted values. And the machine learning algorithm we're going to use to fit um, these regression models is going to try to minimize that error. So it's going to search over all these functions to reduce the error um, in, in these predicted values. OK, so this is our overall flow chart. And we're going to walk through the various components of this throughout this module and in more depth in the rest of this course.